Our thought for today is, I used to think I was indecisive. Now I'm not so sure. Today we look at our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, this remarkable story of Paul and Silas in Philippi and how they had been arrested by the magistrates because there was a, a crowd uprising against Paul and si Silas because Paul had cast out the demon from a young slave girl who was owned by her masters. And she, as a possessed girl, could tell the future. And so she was like a fortune teller. So her owners were making lots of money on her. And, and it says that the girl had followed Paul and Silas around for two days and bothered them so much, Paul finally had enough. And he just cast out the demon. He did an exorcism. So this girl who had been really a slave to these masters, but also a slave to the devil, was freed twofold. And now she was free, but her masters were very upset because they lost their money that they were making off of her. So they arrested, they had Paul and Silas arrested and says the magistrates stripped Paul and Silas and beat them with rods. They had them beaten with rods. Now notice that even though Paul was a Roman citizen, he did not tell them that this could have stopped the beating. Paul could have said, hey, I'm a Roman citizen, but he didn't. He willingly accepted that suffering for the sake of Christ, being willing to endure that. And it says they have inflicted many blows upon them and then sent them into prison, really the maximum security prison, the innermost cell, and even their feet were tied to a stake in chains. And what were Paul and Silas doing? It was midnight and they were singing hymns to God and praying, singing hymns and praising God while the other prisoners listened Imagine that, I'm sure they had never heard singing in that prison before. And it reminds us that just last week on our pilgrimage to um, Poland and all the Catholic shrines, we also visited Auschwitz. And where if you go to cell block 13, you see the cell where Maximilian Kolbe died, where he and these other men were placed and where they were starved to death over the course of two weeks. No food, no water. And if you go there today, you'll see the Paschal candle just like this that Pope John Paul II placed there when he visited Auschwitz to show that even in the midst of the darkness and the horror of Auschwitz was the light of Christ and the light of Maximilian Kolbe giving his life for a man he did not even know. And what was Maximilian Kolbe doing in that cell block? He was praying the rosary with the men. He was singing hymns to God, just like Paul and Silas were doing that in their prison. So then at midnight, a severe earthquake shook the foundations of the jail. The doors flew open, all the chains were pulled loose. The, the jailer woke up, seeing the doors open, he drew his sword to kill himself because he knew that if these prisoners had escaped, he would be tortured and endure all sorts of horrible uh, torture and then death. So he was going to take his own life. What does Paul do? Paul and Silas do not escape. Instead, they're concerned for the jailer. Paul shouts out in the darkness, do not harm yourself, we're all still here. So the jailer brings in a light. I love what St. John Chrysostom says. He says the jailer brought Paul and Silas a lamp, a torch, a light, and yet Paul and Silas would give him the light of truth and give him Jesus, the light of the world. And then it says this, Jailer falls to his knees and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And so here we have a mini catechism lesson. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. The word believe doesn't just mean an intellectual assent. It means accepting Christ, following Christ, believing in him, clinging to him, trusting in him, and really turning your life over to him. And the jailer did this. Obviously, the jailer was repentant of his sins. He believed in Christ. And so then it says, they spoke the word of the Lord to him and everyone in his house. Often jailers would live in a place right in or near the prison. And so it says, he took them that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Again, John Chrysostom says that the jailer would bathe the wounds of Paul and Silas from their beatings and then Paul and Silas would wash and bathe the entire family in the waters of baptism. 
The jailer would be baptized as well as his wife, his children, his whole household, servants were all brought to Christ. And just as the jailer then brought them into his house, so Paul and Silas would bring this family into the house of God, which is the church. And then lastly, it says they provided a meal for Paul and Silas. And then I'm sure Paul and Silas would eventually provide the Eucharist to this family. So it's a beautiful thought by St. John Chrysostom that not only would they baptize this family, but they would also eventually feed this family with Jesus, the bread of life, and this family had fed them with a meal. So this is a powerful story of the conversion of the jailer and his family. And notice it wasn't just believing in Christ, they had to be baptized as well. The believing is the beginning, but they had to receive the sacraments and they were baptized and became members of God's family.